is going on guys apex rc here today we are reviewing the 1.6 meter or the 1600 millimeter uh, flight line corsair this is the birdcage version and there is two different versions there's this one and the uh, traditional bubble top uh, version with the blue paint scheme when i did think of getting a corsair or decided when i wanted to get one uh, I did have the bubble top in mind the whole way through, and at the last second, I ended up changing my mind to get the birdcage version, because I really liked the classic old school look this one kind of gave off. And I see a lot less people have the birdcage version, so I wanted it to be a little unique. I guess we'll go ahead and hop right into the scale details here. So it does have navigation lights on each wing, which is pretty great. Uh, they are pretty bright. They are visible in daylight, which is always nice. And you do have a functioning landing light on the front leading edge of the wing. It does go on and off with the landing gear. And you can see here we have the little gun pods. There is nothing on the inside. It's just pretty much bare foam on there. So I did kind of try to paint the inside of it black so it's a little less noticeable. And we do have actual functioning gear doors. So when the gear goes up, uh, the entire bottom of the plane is flush and clean. You don't see anything there. And the gear doors are uh, worked by a servo, not by the little spring. You can see we got some nice little exhaust there on the bottom. Not a whole lot going on with panel lines on the bottom here, of course. Panel lines on top are done pretty nicely. Uh, it did not come with the weathering or the, the nomenclature decals. So any of the little black texts that you see here are from Calligraphics. But everything else came with the plane. So you can see some nice rivet detail here on the fuel tank. There's some rivet details here. There's a good look at the cockpit. And here we got Frederick Jr., the third right there. Some nice decals here. And there's a good look at the tail wheel. <clears throat> There's some details on the tail. You do have a tail hook, which is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't move or anything, where it just kind of freely sits in there. Uh, if this part wasn't in the way, it'd just fall right out. So I did think about doing some um, tail hook landings and just seeing what would happen. And if I do do that, I'll definitely get it on video and post it up on the channel. In terms of quality, I would say it's held up pretty well. It's got a very nice structural strength to it. Um, it did have a mid-air collision. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, and I were doing a formation flight with a Corsair and a P-51 uh, for a Warbird event. And we were doing a practice thing and uh, we decided to change up a position in the sky and ended up having catastrophic results. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you all that now. This was on a practice day, luckily, not the actual event day. Uh, my buddy and I had planned to switch positions in the formation to try to make the formation look a little better. And I guess it ended up being a, a disaster. Luckily, we were actually able to fix all the plans for the event day and the uh, formation demo was a success. So yeah, after uh, the crash, the Corsair is in pretty great condition, surprisingly, besides a busted prop and... Uh, a little bit of scrape damage on the bottom of the plane. But other than that, uh, it has survived some pretty bouncy landings that I've had before since it's my first Warbird. So I'm still just, uh, figuring out how to land it properly. I'm slowly figuring it out compared to my uh, EDF jets that I mostly fly. In terms of that, uh, is it easy to fly? It's about what you would expect from a Corsair. Um, it does have your typical Warbird tendencies on takeoffs and landings. Uh, it doesn't yaw too hard on takeoffs as some other Warbirds would, 
but uh, it does have your uh, landing tendencies where after you touch down, you know, the tail wheel just basically just goes wherever it wants and it pretty much gets impossible to steer sometimes. Uh, with that being said, uh, it does fly uh, better in a stronger headwind because that's what helps keep the, the tail uh, straight. Because if you fly in some kind of crosswind, you're going to have more tendency to have the tail kind of swing all over the place. But other than that, uh, it does fly pretty good uh, in high winds, uh, especially headwind, like I said. Uh, it's pretty easy to handle in the sky. Uh, it does have a pretty slow stall speed. It doesn't bite too hard or anything like that. In terms of performance, uh, it does fly pretty good. doesn't really have any bad tendencies that I've noticed in the air. Uh, the only thing to note is, uh, of course, it does have your board bird tendencies uh, on the ground in terms of uh, roll off after a landing or takeoff. It's not as bad on takeoff as most other warbirds are. It is pretty easy to keep straight. But uh, of course it's got that characteristic when after you land the tail wheel just kind of got a mind of its own. It just does whatever it wants. But it does help whenever there's a strong headwind because the headwind kind of keeps the tail straight from going all over the place. Uh, probably one of the only gripes I have is it doesn't have a very good turn radius. So, of course, it is kind of hard to keep it from going all over the place after a landing. And uh, surprisingly, this thing, uh, it's got very nice inverted flying characteristics. Uh, it feels very, very stable when flying upside down. It's probably one of the best inverted flyers that I've ever flown before, which is pretty cool. I'll definitely uh, demonstrate that in the flight. I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the setup here. Something else I forgot to mention is the flap system is actually pretty cool. So there are three surfaces here and they're all three conjoined in this little plastic in between and it's run off two servos per flap. Landing flaps. So you can see they're kind of all conjoined together and they, they come down pretty far. You can see how it's got two flap servos there. It's pretty cool. It's one of the coolest uh, flap setups I've seen on planes, so definitely very scale. In terms of setup, um, everything is done pretty much by the book. We'll go ahead and show you the inside here and show you how the plane's got it all worked up. So I have a 5,000 roaring top. Uh, 70C uh, all the way forward and our CG is about right here right in front of that little black line it's about a hundred millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing just by the book it does have your traditional blue box setup that most motion planes have I do have a eight channel receiver in there even though it doesn't need an eight channel so it does have your basic six uh, channel setup. Get a good look in there. And with a 5,000 pack, I do get about eight and a half minutes uh, of flight time. Uh, if you were to be a lot more conservative on the throttle, you could probably squeeze maybe 10 minutes out of it or so. <clears throat> but nothing too special going on here. I guess we'll go ahead and head out to the field and show you all the flight. All right, here we are back out the field again. All right, let's see how good we can do this takeoff. Oh, that was great. Gear up. Of course, it does have your standard Warbird characteristics being uh, a little sketchy on takeoff sometimes. It does seem to fly pretty decent in uh, a little bit of headwind because of course after it lands or takes off the tail wheel just kind of goes all over the place. But usually all warbirds are like that. Sometimes you get lucky and it's not, but this one does have those same warbird characteristics. I 
I am cruising about like 50 to 60% throttle most of the time. Definitely got great vertical performance. It doesn't go forever, but it does climb for a pretty long time. It does feel pretty nice on the rolls. One thing I really like about this is the way it flies inverted. I and mean, it just feels so stable. Look at that. Super stable. I'll show y'all some of the crazy elevator authority it's got. Look at that. A little tight radius turn there. Let me try a little bit closer to this. I mean, this just got crazy amounts of throw. It doesn't really do accelerated stalls on you very much. Even when you're banking it pretty hard, it still feels pretty great. Let's see like a tight turn here. Look at that. Look how tight that can be. And it's a, it's a pretty heavy plane too. It's a pretty big heavy plane. It's a nice scale flyer. All right, we can bring it around and give you all a full throttle pass. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's got plenty of power to get when it needs to be done. power now. It rips a little bit. Anybody, if you guys are a big fan of the Corsair, this is a good plan for you. It does everything a Corsair does. That was one of the best for this one. It is a little bit breezy out here. I think it's about 10 to 15 miles an hour right now, and it feels pretty good. 
We got about a minute and a half left. Take off flaps. I do like to use half flaps. Uh, it does feel pretty nice on the landings. Uh, full flaps is good too, but uh, it is a lot more prone to bouncing doing full flaps, so I usually prefer to do half. So let's hope and pray we get a good landing out of this. We'll take it. Come on, turn. There we go. Up. Beautiful, beautiful plane. Uh, in conclusion, if you're looking for a big scale Corsair, I will definitely say Flightline delivers on this model. Uh, there's a couple guys at my flying field that has some other Flightline planes, and they have nothing but good things to say about them. I've seen them myself, and they have some very great looking models. So yeah, if y'all are looking for a good scale Warbird, uh, Flightline definitely delivers. Thanks for watching, guys.